Hi everyone, I'm Cassie, and um, I don't like doing videos with my face and everything, but I know there's a lot of people out there, they don't know what I look like, and that's fine, they can see what I look like now. This is Cassie, hi. And apparently, I've been having my name out there a lot amongst um, these platform preachers, and people have been harassing me on Facebook, on YouTube, and I'm just going to give you a bit of, I'm going to address some issues that are really bothering me. And this is not for popularity. This is, if you know my character, I do not, I do not like liars. That's my biggest thing. I do not like it when people deceive people. I do not like it when people bully people. I am a vigilante in that sense where... I like to go after the bullies who bully other people. And so when people try to bully me, I give them a run for their money. I just do. But these are the things I want to address. One, I've written down a lot of things, so hold on. I had some videos down there. If you look at my posts down there, I have done some videos on these false teachers and this other girl was involved named Marie. Well, Marie and I have been engaging with each other, not that much, but just a little. And apparently this Marie is got, she has a habitual habit of searching out people. And I think it's just the wrong way to do it. You don't have to search out every single person, Marie. I'm sorry, you just don't, okay? I'm not on a platform to have to be searched out. We have to remind each other, we are all fallen. We all fall short of the glory of God. None of us is perfect. We all sin. We're always gonna continue to sin. We, we do our best to try to lead a sinless life, but God knows we're not gonna be able to do that. <laughs> I mean, he knows that we're not gonna be able to do that. It's impossible because our bodies are sinful. We are not in our spiritual bodies yet. So we're going to sin. That's why we go to him and ask for forgiveness. But I cannot stand these people Everyone's attacking everyone lately, and there doesn't seem to be any sides anymore. There's no trust, and there's no honesty. We need to get on each other's side and, and fight the good fight. Don't fight me. You're supposed to be fighting with me to expose these people, okay? But you're fighting against me now, and now you're searching out information on me? You need to, one, back off. Okay, so this girl Marie, she's trying to search out information on me and scrolling through my Facebook post and finds this one Facebook post on me. My sister, Patty, had posted something about the name Jesus being you, apparent, something to do with Jesus and Zeus. Okay, I've never looked into it. I don't know anything about it. I don't really care. Um, saying that Jesus came from the name Zeus and that it's a it's a, a pagan god name and you shouldn't be using the name Jesus. I'm gonna get into that in a second. But I wrote this down. Where's my glasses? I wrote this down. Like I'm not good on this. I don't even like putting my face out there. Okay, I just don't. It's it bothers me. So I used to, I usually just like to use my voice. But I don't want people to assume that I'm afraid to put my face out there now. So I'm just going to put my face out there. This is probably going to be one-time deal. So soak it up while you can because you ain't going to get it again. Anyhow, I wrote this out because this Marie seems to be an extremely toxic individual. And that's what I'm starting to find out. And she's, to she's toxic to other people. And she's become toxic to me. So I had to end up blocking her. Um, because I don't need her searching me out. 
I wrote, we all had toxic people dust us with their poison. Sometimes it's more like a drenching. Difficult people are drawn, difficult people are drawn to the reasonable ones and all of us have likely had or have at least one person in our lives who have us bending around ourselves like barbed wire in endless attempts to please them, only to never really get there. So this girl Marie seems to give problems to other people and she's, she's a victim. There's people out there that like to play the victim. I'm a victim. You did this to me. You did that to me. Everyone's a victim of some sort. Listen, we've all been victimized some, one way or another, okay? We've all had problems in our lives. Nobody's had the perfect leave it to beaver life. Nobody has. If it has to do with us, our children, or in, anything in our life, we've been molested or we've been abused by somebody in our life lest it be a friend abused us verbally or emotionally, a boyfriend, a husband, a father, somebody's, we've all been abused one way or another. Nobody's not been abused, okay? But when you start to become a victim and you, you, you victimize yourself over everything, I've got Lyme disease, I have cancer, I have this or that, and you, you play pathetic and you obsess over it, stop being a victim, basically. Marie, stop being a victim. Stop attacking people. I'm gonna get into this whole Yahushua that she's accusing me of because God forbid I don't like the name Jesus. I don't. I tolerate the name Jesus, but I don't I don't know if I like it, okay? I just don't know if I do. This is important information, and there is no and there is salvation Acts 4:12, okay? Acts 4.12, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men which we must be saved. Let me say that again. There is no other name, name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed him on the name that is above every name, so that the name of Yahweh, Hushua, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Yahushua, Christ, Christ is a title, not a name, is Lord, to the glory of the God, to the glory of God the Father. Now, let me come here. What is your name? My name is Cassie, okay? My name's not Patty, my name's not Sally, my name's not Patsy. It's, I don't go by any other name. If I'm given a name from my parents, that is the name I go by. Do not call me something else that I'm not, okay? Don't translate it in your other language because we all can speak. We can say another language, okay? A name is a name and I'm not gonna have my name changed. And when I die, my name, I don't want my name on my headstone saying somebody else's name in a different translation, okay? I just don't. Would you want your name translated into something else that it's not? I'm just curious. Would you want your name translated into something else that it is not? No, you wouldn't. Isaiah 7:14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. The name Jesus is an invention of man. In conclusion, Jesus was not the... This is my research I'm giving you right now. In conclusion, Jesus was not the name of our Messiah when he walked this earth. 
Man has removed the name of the Heavenly Father and his Messiah from his own book. Perhaps names aren't very important in the modern world, but in, script in the scripture, we can find that they are very important. Hold on, I'm reading through my notes. Many take the third commandment to mean that we should not use the Heavenly Father's name alongside his word. Okay, so this is what I'm going to get into here. I struggled for many, 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 many decades on "Thou shalt not take the, the Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain." And here they've replaced the commandment with "Lord," a title. Okay. Where am I going with this? I haven't had much sleep, so bear with me. Okay. I always thought we've all been mistaken that, okay, taking the Lord's name in vain is saying, oh God, or saying God and then the word damn it afterwards. Like that's cursing his name. Now remember, God is a title, it is not his name. His name is Yahweh. That is our Holy Father's name. His name is I am. I am is his name. So. This is the research I've done. Many take the third commandment to mean that we should not use the Heavenly Father's name alongside a swear word or profanity. I could see where it certainly might mean this. Others say that taking his name on our lips while living a life of sin is another way of taking his name in vain. I can agree with this also. However, I have found that the third commandment means much more than this. Replacing the Heavenly Father's name with a title of our own choosing, such as the Lord, God, Adonai, or Hashem, is another way of taking his name in vain. Let's look at the third commandment as written in the King James Bible. Deuteronomy 5.11 Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that has taken his name in vain. If we examine this verse in the Hebrew text that the King James Bible was translated from, we would not find the Lord or any word that carries such a meaning. What is actually there is the Heavenly Father's true name, Yahweh. I believe it is important to consider whether or not this tradition is something the Heavenly Father would desire us to follow. Let us take a moment and look at the Webster's Dictionary definition of the word vain having no real substance or value or importance empty void worthless unsatisfying the vain for an example the vain excuse destitute of forge or efficiency efficacy sorry i said that wrong effecting no purpose fruitless ineffectual as vain toil a vain attempt considering the meaning of the word vain what greater way to bring Yahweh's name to emptiness worthlessness and having no real substance value or purpose than to remove his name altogether from scripture and substitute it with a title of our own choosing those who have chosen to practice this are doing just that this practice is so widespread and so complete that few people even know the Heavenly Father has a personal name. Yahweh chose to place his name in scripture nearly 7,000 times. Seven? That's a holy number, FYI. And each one of those 7,000 times it is replaced with a title such as the Lord. In 99% of all translations, in fact, in most translations, the third commandment as written is a transgression of itself. Why? Because the third commandment forbids bringing his name to nothing. Yet most translations do just that. You've taken away his name, which he said do not make his name void. Don't, but you're doing it. So if we want to keep the Ten Commandments, we should never replace Yahweh's name with a false name or title of our own choosing. Doing so would be breaking the Third Commandment altogether. This is not the only way to break the Third Commandment. 
but we can see that it is certainly one way of doing so. We are not supposed to add or take away from the scriptures, but in doing this, man has chosen to both add and take away. And you will be held accountable for all that you have taken away and added. God tells us that. So like I was saying, what if I called you Patty? Or is that your name? Then why should we call Yahushua Christ title another name other than his true name? Did he not speak to Saul in Acts 26, 14 and say specifically that he was speaking to Saul in his Hebrew tongue? And in speaking to Saul, he gave him his Hebrew name. He specifically said this to him. Acts 26, 14. What did he say? Hold on. Uno momento, por favor. Copy. I want to tell you, I should have had this up, and I don't know why I didn't have it up, but I'm going to have it up now. Because I don't like making long, I don't want to make a long video. I get annoyed with long videos. And I know I'm going to make one. Hold on, here we go. Okay. This is the King James Version. Acts 26, 14. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue. This says it in scripture. You can't deny it. It says this. I heard a voice speaking unto me. And this is Paul talking while he was Saul. I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. So he's speaking into his Hebrew tongue, Yahushua, right? Hold on. Give me one moment, Acts 26. I want to pull up the full scripture. Like I said before, I'm old school with this stuff, so just tolerate it. Acts 26, 14. Hold on, Acts 26. I wanted to read the whole thing. And let me say this again. I'm going to give you this to you in full, okay? This is Christ, Yahushua, in his Hebrew tongue. What's his Hebrew name? Yahushua. His Hebrew name isn't Jesus because the letter J did not exist until the 1600s, okay? The letter J was not in existence until the 1600s. And if he's saying, speaking in his Hebrew name, he says this. This is his words. And when we are fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, and it's great how he specifies that, the Hebrew tongue. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Yahushua, whom thou persecutest. Now, let me ask you this. Now, of course, they changed it to Jesus in here. So if Jesus, Yahushua, is speaking in his Hebrew tongue, he's not saying, this is Jesus. No, he's saying, this is Yahushua, right? I mean, come on. It makes sense, people. I mean, let's utilize our thinking skills. I'm not going to call him Jesus because that's not his name. Just like your name is not Patty or Sally unless your name is really Patty or Sally. But if your name's John, do you want me to call you Patty? If your name's John, do you want me to call you Michael? Is that your name? No. And I, okay, hold on. And that he was speaking to him in his Hebrew tongue. Okay. What did I write? And in speaking to him, okay, Jesus uh, came out of here. Okay. Jesus came out of Europe. Yahushua came from Israel. This is a huge fact. The name Jesus and Isus has no meaning whatsoever. 
but Yahushua actually means salvation. His name is the name above all names. So if Jesus has no meaning and Yahushua does, Oliver, stop biting. And Yahushua does, then who are the bigger fools here? All of us who have been calling our Lord the wrong name since the 1600s. Boy, the devil sure played a trick on us now, didn't he? You think the devil didn't do this? You think he doesn't have a hand in everything that goes on in this world because he has dominion over it for now? Right? What is the trickiest thing to do but to change the name of all names, the Lord, Yahushua, to change his name? You think that isn't a tricky little trick? You think you haven't been fooled? I choose to call my Lord and Savior by his Hebrew name, Yahushua. That was the name given to him. He says it in scripture. I spoke to, he spoke to me in his Hebrew language, his Hebrew tongue, Paul says. He clarifies it. Can't deny it. Except those who think Paul, the writings of Paul were a joke. Those are the sickies. I'm not going to get into that here. So, I'm going to go to the, my next subject. I hope this whole subject of the name of Jesus and Yahushua, maybe it gives you something to think about because I'm not going to give people a hard time if they want. If you guys want to call him Jesus, that's on you, okay? I choose to call my Lord and Savior Yahushua. That's what I'm going to call him because that is his name. Don't call me something that's not my name. I'm not going to respond to you. Do you think that when Yahushua was walking this earth, they were saying, hey, Jesus, over here. You think so? No, they weren't. They were speaking to him in the Hebrew tongue, Yahushua. Say it with me. Yahushua. Let's say our father's name Yahweh not hard to say it right it's not like you have to roll your tongue any certain way just say it I'm gonna move on to the next subject I've had these I don't know if it just ended up in my lap or what but I've got I have this other video I made exposing the Danoons Phoebe also known as Yana and her supposed husband, Stephen Denim. First of all, if you look them up, you can search high and low. You can search on Bing. You can search on DuckDuckGo. You can search on Google search engines. You can maneuver and switch it around and try and out trick these search engines with any kind of way you want to perform. But you will not find anything on the Denims except this. Israeli News Live, Israeli News Live, Israeli News Live. So, I've dug deeper into Yana's identity. And these two fools who've tried to fool everyone on their platform, they have almost 400,000 people on their pyramid scheme platform. I'll get to you why I call it a pyramid scheme platform pyramid scheme it's all a money-making scheme trust me so it is my duty as a Christian to expose the works of darkness God gives me this authority okay so if he gives me that authority to expose the tares among the wheat I'm going to utilize that Ephesians 5.11 is my duty to expose the works of darkness. So what does Ephesians 5.11 say? Give me a moment. Uno momento. Por favor. Excuse my dog. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them all I'm doing Yana and Steve is exposing you 
I have that right. If you want to expose me, go ahead. Marie tried to, and I just explained myself. What else you got on me, Marie Leong? Nothing. Yeah, I have a brutal past. I, I, was, I speak like a thug. I don't know what to tell you. We're all fallen. We all have sins. Why don't you go ahead, like our Lord t tells us to do, and look at the log in your eye first before you go pointing out the log in my eye, okay? I'm not a teacher. I don't go out there on a platform and teach people. That's not my responsibility. I don't want that responsibility because the Lord says he's going to put the teachers in a higher regard and they're going to pay a heftier price if they mislead his, 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 his um, flock. I don't want that kind of responsibility because I don't want to mess up. I just want to worry about myself. That's what I want to do. I want to worry about myself. I don't want to worry about a whole his flock in that sense. I don't want that responsibility. It scares the dickens out of me. And I fear the Lord. I only fear the Lord. I fear nobody or nothing else. I only fear the Lord. So Dr. June Knight, the Danoons, if you're trying to do your scare tactics on me, like I said before, I'm just a rock you're going to break yourself against. Because I only fear him. I don't fear death. Okay? Get that through your head with your CIA Mossad thinking, Danoons. Because I know what you're all about. I got your number. Let's move along. I don't even know how long this video is right now, but I don't care. Okay, so, like I was saying, we are all fallen. We all sin. And we all have to account for our own sins. But if you are a teacher on a platform, and these Danoons have been teaching the Essene Gospels, they have. They are continuing to. Now, this is a false teacher. A false teacher will give you 80% of truth and 20% of false because they want to worm their way in. Okay? They're worming their way in misguiding you, deceiving you, because they don't want you to know they're that wolf among the sheep. They don't want you to know they're a tear among the wheat. So they're going to give you the majority here of truth. And they're going to salt and pepper it with lies, just to warm it in, just to kind of sneak it in and put a little bug in your ear. That's what false teachers do. The Danoons have and still integrate these false teachings into their ministry. Because Phoebe, AKA Yana, likes to think that God is male and female. That is pagan doctrine. God is, she likes to say God is all. That is pagan doctrine. God does not identify himself as a female in any of the scriptures, okay? Nowhere in scripture does he identify himself as a female, period, Phoebe. Let me keep reading on. So, a friend of mine that I'm going to, she wants to remain nameless, but I did love her interpretation of these platform preachers online she calls them fear pornographers fear pornography the Bagley's the Paul Bagley out there the June dr. June Knight um, where, where she even get the title doctor I thought she was a journalist she's a White House correspondent but whatever I don't know her past I don't care um, but I'm just giving you her, what she likes to put herself as a title as the Israeli News Live Danoons, Bamoon. They have several names. I'll get into that in a moment, too. So they're fear pornographers. They feed off of people's fear. And if you go look them up, all they're talking about constantly is asteroids, asteroids, asteroids. We're going to get, we're, apparently the new thing now is we're going to, there's going to be, we're going to go through some asteroid belt or some kind of belt 
and we're gonna get plummeted by asteroids and we're gonna die so they're putting on their YouTube we're, they live in Florida but now we're leaving Florida because somehow they've got some inside source saying that what it's gonna land somewhere in the Florida vicinity or something this asteroid <laughs> it's, just all, it's all fear mongering it's all fear mongering the Lord tells us not to fear he doesn't give us a spirit of fear he gives us a spirit of hope we're all going to die okay we're gonna die no matter what so stop fearing the death because if you really are in Christ you know this body is not going to be forever you know we're going to go into life as soon as we leave this filthy disgusting body it's a filthy disgusting body I don't even want this body and when we leave this body it says it's better to be out of this body and be present with the Lord okay we will immediately be present with the Lord those who are in Christ if you're not in Christ get with Christ anyhow these people are fear pornographers for God is a, okay for the scripture tells us that God is not the author of fear for God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind that is 2nd Timothy 1 7 the news media has unleashed a spirit of fear to immobilize our people and our nation the news media has become the instrument of Satan know this when fear takes root faith is destroyed when faith is destroyed then you are immobilized you must not give in to the spirit of fear know the facts now Phoebe said something aka Yana she had said something about I'm sorry I'm always bringing you bad news I never bring you good news what kind of teacher of Christ is that aren't you supposed to be speaking his word which is it's the good word it's a word of hope not a word of fear and scare tactics you're so promoting fear Danoons and Bagley and June Knight you promote fear you are an antichrist spirit and I am here to expose the root of you you cannot fear me with your lawsuits okay go ahead and sue me I'm a blue-collar kind of gal you ain't gonna get much from me and you're gonna spend more money doing out-of-state lawyer fees than anything so you're gonna be spending all this money <laughs> not getting anything back I don't own a house FYI I rent a two-bedroom apartment what are you gonna get from me I'm probably never gonna own a house and I'm fine with that I live in humble surroundings I don't mind that I'm not a money hungry person I don't care about money all I care about is having a roof over my head food on the table clothes on my back get my bills paid a nice bed to sleep in that's all I care about I don't need money I don't need the riches of this life because the riches are gonna come with being in the presence of my Lord and that is what I care about I don't care about the almighty dollar you can only serve one master do you want to serve God or do you want to serve money if you go after money constantly going after money you're serving money and these online preachers that's what it is these Billy Graham's these preachers of the world are millionaires Billy Graham was a millionaire. Billy Graham was a joke. Okay? So any of you want to sit there and cry and moan at me about how great Billy Graham was? You know what? The Lord told us that we're supposed to give away our riches and follow him. Did, you, did the apostles, were they rich? No, they weren't rich. <laughs> no, they weren't rich. So why are all you people saying, donate to me, donate to me, donate to me? Now here's what the Danoons do. Now, Dr. June Knight, she, that girl is just a fat cackling hen. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm not going to sound Christian and blah, 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 whatever. I'm a fallen person. She's a fat cackling hen and she talks like a witch. She speaks a witch's language with her forked tongue. Asking people, oh, everything's about raising her book up. Oh, my book, my book, my book. 
okay? Everything's about promoting me, 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 me. Oh, look at me. I'm going to sit here like a fat cackling hen and I'm going to sing to you and I'm going to promote my book. And I'm, I'm going to talk like this so I can weed in all the elderly women who like me. And I'm going to feed off the elderly women because they love me. Oh, look at me. I'm going to sing for you. That's, that's June night. Gosh, you're just... You're just a nasty, nasty individual woman. Gluttony. Take a look in the mirror. These, so I had warned June Knight about the Danunes, okay? And this is the letter I wrote because you see in the other videos that I'm trying to expose the Danunes. And where the heck did I put my letter? One moment, please. There's my mail. Wait, hold on. All inboxes. Come on. Come on. Come on. What did I do with it? I can't remember what I did with the letter. Church of the Synagogue? No. Um, oh, is that it? Hold on, please. No, I could have sworn I sent it. Oh, oh no, I put it in here. Ephesians. I think I put it in here. Hold on. No. Right. Hold on, please looking through my notes we have a lot to talk about oh oh here it is okay so I sent June Knight now June Knight is a White House correspondent she likes to brag she works with Trump whatever who cares Trump is compromised Trump is compromised I'm not gonna get into that he's not my of importance to me today but I tried, I was told, okay, so after I was exposing the Danunes and how they are still dipped into the Zacine Gospels and these Holy Twelve writings and um, saying that our scriptures are unbiblical, they're saying that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, this is the Danunes, they said Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are a lie. Now, isn't that what we based our Christianity faith on? That's the foundation of Christianity, is it not? And they're telling us it's corrupt? Look at my other videos. I'm showing proof from Phoebe, a.k.a. Yana's mouth, that our scriptures are corrupt. Our scriptures are not corrupt. She said the Old and New Testament are corrupt. Constantine and the Catholic Church corrupted it. So this is what they were telling me. But they said they didn't want to expose it to anybody because... They didn't want, they didn't know how people would react is what I'm assuming. They were afraid of that. People weren't going to react well. So they were afraid to expose this to anybody. Red flags, red flags, red flags, neon letters, red flags. So I didn't know this June night from Adam. I've heard of her. I never watched her. I don't care about her. But I had a couple of friends contact me and said, Cassie, June Knight's going to have an interview. This was like a couple of days ago, during the week, this past week. Cassie, Dr. J J June Knight is going to be having an interview with the Danunes. You need to contact her right away and tell, them, tell her that she's compromised. And I'm like, oh, I don't feel like dealing with her. They're, they kept pushing me. Please, Cassie, please call her. And I said, okay, I'll do it. I'll indulge you and I'll do it. So I indulged my friends and I called her and I left her a message and um said what my evidence was and if you you're interested please give me a call here's my phone number um and so she never called me back but instead had the interview with the denouns and then the following day proceeded to call me out not by name but she, her little smart ass mouth oh my gosh cassie said smart ass don't start feeding off that one okay Please move along. Anyhow, her smart ass mouth had to try and put me in check by saying, 
if you're, I know you're watching this, the one who called me, sweetheart, I never even watched it. I'm not going to listen to you and your fat cackling hen mouth. I don't have time and I don't care what you say about me. If you, it, it, people who know me know I don't care what people think or say about me. I don't live my life for any of you. I live my life for him, not you, okay? So you can talk all the smack you want on me. Goes out the door into the dust, means nothing to me. I just heard what she was doing, was trying to slam me. I'm not gonna have nothing to do with you. I know the Danoons and we have foundation. Oh, so you have the same foundation as them? Thanks for clarifying that. I appreciate it. This is what I decided to write because she decided to call me out. So I decided to call her ass back out. And I called her again and I wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt. And I left her two messages, gave her my phone number again and I said, June, first of all, who do you follow? Do you follow the Lord or do you follow the Danoons? Who are you loyal to? Where does your loyalty lie? My, lo my loyalty lies with no one else but my Savior and my Father. That's where my loyalty lies. I'm not loyal to anybody except Him. I follow no man. I'm a follower of no man. So there must be a deeper, darker agenda here you got there, June. Oh, that's right, you want to promote your book. <laughs> you want to promote your book. That's what it's all about, June. I know. So I wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt and I wanted to, so I decided to send her the evidence, but I added my two cents in in sending her the evidence of them being compromised. Dear June, this will be my final attempt to oblige you with evidence I have, not just me, but others as well. There are multiple witnesses and, there, and where there are two or more witnesses, it would stand up in a court of law. June, I wish you would act like the journalist you are, because apparently she's a journalist. I wish you would act, now this part, my friend, Annie helped me with. She wanted me to put this in there. So these are Annie's words. I'm not taking credit on my girlfriend's words. June, I wish you would act like the journalist you are. A true journalist always looks at both sides of the equation so that they can refute anything that is not true. That's why I am perplexed why you would not look at my evidence before making a judgment call. So then I continue. The only reason after I offer you this proof that you would dismiss it would prove to me that you that you are wait that you are continuing that you are continuing your involvement involvement with the Danoons is because they have a large following of over 300,000 people and you want a platform to promote your book. I know you have the same amount of subscribers, but more is better for some people, right? Right. You need to make a choice. I will start to question your motives if you ignore this. Who do you follow, Christ or the Danoons? Cassie. Okay. Let's see where I'm at. This red falls in. Okay. So, apparently, this June character decides to make another video about me. And in it, at the 20 minute mark, she starts calling me out and I did not watch it. Again, she says, I know you're watching this or something like that. No, sweetheart, I never watched it. I don't care what you've got to say about me. But I, other people did watch it and in reflection of that, I was told this was their response to it and their perception of it. Now, I don't know if people know who the NAR are, they are the new apostolic reformation. They basically, they're basically, they're just very corrupt. And if you ever wanna know about it, look into it, I can give you more information. I'm not gonna get into that right now, but June came out of the NAR. 
and the charismatic movement. So this individual sent me this text and said, just listen to her video and read the emails. June Knight may have claimed to have left the NAR and the charismatic movement, but they haven't left her. Everything she said about and to you smacks of NAR tactics, which is to big league people. She stated that you can't imagine what the Danoons have to deal with in regards to international issues and that it is not your calling. Amazingly, I heard this too when I questioned so-called prophets within the NAR charismatic church I briefly attended as they used that same language that I don't have their calling and for me to, st and for me to stay in my lane. Apparently, that's what June said, I need to stay in my lane. Dear, I'm gonna knock you out of your lane. You watch. June, and if you wanna sit there and say, oh, that's a threat, that's a threat, all I do is use my words, okay? There's no other thing I do, I use my words. So you could take that or leave it June all you want. I'm not threatening physical harm on you. I'm just telling you I'm gonna knock you off your lane. You'll soon find out how and why. June also, this, this individual continues by saying, June also employed the same NAR charismatic bullying tactic with the don't touch my anointed scare tactic. June was trying to scare you into backing off implying that you will be responsible for thousands of dying in spiritual error. How am I responsible for thousands of people dying? Do I have a platform? Am I a teacher? No, that responsibility lies on your shoulders, yours and the Danoons, and you are the ones that are the Pied Pipers leading them into the river to drown. Not I. You can't scare me, June. You can't bully me. And you can't try to use your mind manipulations on someone like me. Trust me. He continues by saying, these are the same old tired tricks of those who have been in charismatic churches. June and the Danoons are no more important than anyone else, but she acted like they are big shots. June, Danoons, you ain't got game. These people make money off of all the viewing on YouTube. So the more subscribers you have, the more viewings, all this adds up. So this is what they do. This is what, def I don't know what June does, but she has her other tactics that are pretty bad, trying to make money, because I've got emails from people telling me messages, text messages that they got. Hold on, and I'll tell you. Uno momento, por favor. Where is it? Okay. So here's, this is June night. She is, calls everyone the bride. This is, we're the bride. We're the bride of Christ. I need two six inch long folding tables and about 30 folding chairs for the conference. I guess they're having some conference coming up that the Danoons are gonna speak up at, at. Apparently June is very connected to the Danoons. They've already stayed at her house or something or something like that. This is just what I'm hearing. Um, and they're feeding off of each other, okay? So she needs people to donate 30 folding chairs for the conference and six inch long folding tables. Well, I don't know, June, aren't you making a lot of money off of everybody already? And now you want everyone to no donate this so you don't have to pull it out of your own pocket? Interesting. What else does she ask for? Oh my gosh. Does anyone have a motorhome or fifth wheel that you could donate to the ministry? This June, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. June Knight is asking people out there to donate a motorhome or a fifth wheel to her ministry. You are disgusting, lady. You are a disgusting, vile individual. I want to vomit you out of my mouth. This is June Knight. Now, the Danoons use another ploy. Apparently, Stephen Danoon 
That's not even his name. He has multiple names, by the way. Steve Cummings, Steve C Catriel, Steve Catriel Banoon. Now their name's Danoon. It's just all so ridiculous. Apparently he's CIA. So if you were CIA, why would you be telling everyone you're CIA? That's one. Two, once CIA, always CIA. Oh, he's retired CIA. We all know once CIA, always CIA. Apparently, I heard through the grapevine, I don't know if this is true, but apparently Steve has a video out there that I, if you all, if anybody sees this and sees that video or has heard that video and has evidence of that video, please forward it to me so I can have proof that he did do this. But I was told that he did a video on how to, to mechanically maneuver a car to kill somebody. I don't know, that's what I was told. The details about that, I have no clue. That's all I know. I'm just gonna go there. So the Danoons um, like to use this. So because he was CIA, this is Stephen Danoon. Asteroids, asteroids, asteroids. I have sources from government sources telling me that we're all gonna die because an asteroid's gonna hit us. We're moving. We're leaving Florida because apparently they know where it's going to land. <laughs> now he's got, I, I see all these Floridians freaking out because these fools listen to these fools. These fools listen to these fools. And now all these people are freaking out going, oh, I got to get out of here. I don't have the money to get out of here. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? There's the spirit of fear that God warned us about. People. Then he continues by saying, I have this little information, but I can I will get shut down by YouTube if I say too much. But you can go to our Patreon site. I'm gonna give you this little bit of tidbit, but I have deeper, darker information. If you go to my Patreon site, which you have to pay for, if you go to my Patreon site. You'll get all the dirty down low stuff. This is the stuff he says. That wasn't word for word. That was my words, but you get the gist. That's what he's saying. You go to my Patreon site, and I'm going to give you all the information on what I can't say here on YouTube. It's a pyramid scheme. Remember all the pyramid schemes back in the 80s and 90s? This is a new scheme. It's a YouTube scheme. It's a platform pyramid scheme that these preachers are feeding off people's fears. They're taking their money, taking their money. Oh, I need this for my ministry. Can you send me money? Can you donate? Donate to me. And I can only give this so much information because, you know, then you have to go to my Patreon site and then you'll get more information because of my government sources. First of all, we go, no government sources are all satanic Luciferians. So I don't think I'm going to go off your government sources, Steve. Secondly, I'm not going to fear. So you Paul Bagley's out there with your fear tactics. You Stephen Denoon with your fear tactics. I can tell you where you can shove them. But I'm a lady. Not really. Anyhow. What's my next thing I was going to say? Um, just for all you people out there that like to follow the Danoons, here's some information that you like. I've been doing a lot of research, and this is not illegal, Danoons. It's quite legal when it's on Google, and you can search you out on MyHeritage.com, Ancestry.com. Your marriage licenses are out there. And just so that you know, I know you're not married. You've been lying to everybody. You are not married. You're living an adulterous life. You're not married. No marriage certificate for the Danoons. Yana Sutova. That's her real name. She was married to a Thomas Lutz, L-U-T-Z, and she was then married. He was a lawyer out of um, 
New Jersey and then in Florida. And then she was married to Joseph Lepez, L-E-P-E-Z. Then you can find that, oddly enough, Joseph Lopez, Yana S-U-T-O-O-V-A, I believe it's spelled. Those two, some reason, they shared the same address as Stephen Catriel, Danoon. I thought that was odd. Um, then I kept searching deeper and deeper. I can see two marriage licenses for Yana, but that's Thomas and Joseph. Where's your marriage license for Stephen? Doesn't exist, because you're not married. I can't wait till you come out with a video making excuses for this with the lies that come out of your forked tongue on this Yana, AKA Phoebe. Why do you have so many names, Yana? Why is your name Yana and Phoebe? Pick one, stick with it. She's got a hundred different last names, that's for sure. Anybody can find you online, FYI. Anybody can find you online. If they wanna pay extra, which I did, just to look you up. It's funny because Stephen Denoon, Benoon, Catriel, Steve T. Cummings, for some reason, Cummings, C-U-M-M-I-N-G-S, they all share the same address. So why are you guys all see, Steve, I know what you are, okay? CIA, Mossad, you're something. Because you can't find nothing on this guy. It's like, the only thing you can find, if you really just dig deep and deep and deep, you can find these little piddly things, but there's nothing else on this guy. It's just odd. And I've got more searching to do, so I'm sure I'll find some more stuff. But right now, this is what I found. So with that, I found in the Czech Republic, and I think Steve and Yana go there for whatever reason. For some reason, the only thing you can find on Stephen Catriel, K-A-T-R-I-E-L, Benun, B-E-N-N-U-N, is a Czech Republic website. I had to translate it over to English. That's all you can find on this guy. You know, Mossad is everywhere. And the funny thing is, is I actually, uh, in my searching, I found a GoFundMe page with these two clowns, Yana and Steve. And I found this GoFundMe page of him saying his wife has, his wife, which is actually just his girlfriend, his wife, Yana, has cervical cancer and she's trying to do these methods and these mess these these natural herbal methods all come out of also the holy 12 gospel of scenes their practices of this this medicine all comes out of that um, that's another su subject if you want to get into it another time but anyhow so where am I at I'm all over the place so give me a second I got to get my thoughts together um, so on this GoFundMe page, you can, if you listen to the language and how somebody speaks, you can catch a lot. And I listen to everything. So I found it odd when he's sitting there giving his testimony of his wife, AKA really girlfriend, giving his testimony about her cervical cancer and they are asking for $10,000. And they got it over that on this GoFundMe page. They're asking for $10,000 because they don't have insurance in the United States. We don't have medical insurance in the United States. So if you don't have medical insurance, wouldn't you just say, I don't have, we don't have medical insurance? Why would you say you don't have medical insurance in the United States? You specifically said that. That is because you have insurance somewhere else. So, I believe they have dual citizenship. Where and why, I don't know. Israel, blah, blah, blah. They are riddled with tons of pictures that I have a link to that shows that they, th their children are adorned in IDF. They're wearing IDF, they have IDF hats, Israeli, military. I honestly think they're Mossad. 
I think they are. I don't have evidence, but you start linking things together. I don't know. This Czech Republic website. I'm going to be doing another video with all the evidence that I found on these people so you could see it for yourself because I'm just saying it right now, but I want you to see what evidence I have. So I will be coming out with one more video to do this. I'm not gonna be doing all these videos, okay? If they keep coming back at me, I might continue to do videos, but I'm going to come, I'm all about evidence, okay? I'm not a teacher. I'm not gonna try and teach you the word of God because I'm not a teacher, I'm not qualified. I'm still doing baby steps myself, you know? And I'm all about evidence. I'm all about exposing people for their fruits. I'm all about the truth and justice. I'm all about bullying the bullies. That's what I do. I've always done that my whole life. I bully the bullies. And the last thing you want to do is bully me. Give me a moment. I'm going to go through my notes and see where I'm at because there's another subject I want to bring up. Where am I at at time? One hour. Using fear to get rich off people. That's what these people do. They're making money off of God's word. What did I write? Why do people feel like they always have to lower themselves to the bottomless pit of false accusations to put themselves on pedestals of authoritative assumption about me? Calling me out, Phoebe calling me a witch, saying I'm unholy because I have a God-given right by Christ to put false teachers and wicked lie spreaders such as yourselves in place. Just as Christ said to the church of Ephesus in Revelation 2, I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. I will never grown weary. I will continue to fight. I have the right to expose you. I will continue to expose your, your deeds and the fruits of you because I have that right and God gives me that right and he will recognize my fight. You cannot scare me. Okay, this is my last subject. I made a friend who made a video nice guy I really like him but we were gonna work together to expose these people because he's a man and I would have preferred a man to take the lead because man has the authority I'm not a feminist Phoebe is a feminist she she produces another false doctrine by saying by her feminist talk um, and God clearly says that man is the head. So I wanted this man to take the reins. But when I found out what, the, he's such a nice guy too. I'm not gonna name his name. But he did a video on the Danoons and he was so good at it, exposing them. That's why I contacted him. He had used my video as evidence against the Danoons that I'd made with Phoebe's messages confirming that the testaments were corrupted, confirming they were, were believed in reincarnation, confirming that they were into these Essene Gospels, confirming that God is male and female when he's not. Um, so he did such a great job and he's such a nice guy and he's he's the kind of guy that when he speaks to you he listens he doesn't try and over talk you he doesn't try to 
overbear he's not overbearing whatsoever he you could just tell he's got a kind heart and I came out of you know we all are trying to come out of something we all get corrected by God with what we're doing I came out of the Seventh-day Adventist cult I call it a cult my family's still in it I'm sorry grandma and I'm sorry to all my other family members who are still in that cult but it's a cult they read the Ellen G. White, she was demon possessed. They read the Ellen G. White writings and they take that to me, they take that in adornment over the Holy Scriptures. I'm not gonna get into all that right now. This guy came out of the um, Seventh-day Adventist Church too. He also came out of, I believe he came out of the Jehovah Witness. I believe. He also came out of the Catholic Church, he said. Um, but now he's in something else. I came out of Seventh-day Adventism, I came out of the, these um, churches that, I guess charismatic churches too, then I came out of the Messianic church. They're very Kabbalistic. I need some water, give me a moment please. They came, the Messianics is just another new cult and they're Jewish Kabbalists. They've integrated their Kabbalism into Christianity. So that's another devilish thing that snuck in. Um, so I've been corrected time and time again. I used to be a pre-tribber. I used to be a soul sleeper. I used to be into all this stuff. And every time I am about to research something, I always, and a friend of mine, her name is Karen, she said to me that God is a gentleman. He will never ask you to do something against your will. And I, it gives me goosebumps when she said that. I go, oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. God is a gentleman, isn't he? He's such a gentleman. He doesn't force anything upon us. He lets us make our own decisions. How wonderful is our God? That he lets us make our own decisions. Yes, we mess up. That's why he gave us Yahushua. Right? We mess up all the time. But he's such a gentleman and he doesn't force anything upon us. And I always ask my Lord, prior to searching out the truth, I ask him before I do my research because I want to make sure that he's with me doing it. And I want to ask his permission for me to do it. And when I do, I say, Lord, because remember, God says that um, if you ask, you shall receive. So if we ask him, we'll receive. So I ask him first for his permission. I'm going to do this research. Please tell me my back is killing me. Hold on. Oh, my back is killing me. Oh, that's much better. I ask him for his permission. Lord, I'm going to do this research. Can you please please send your Holy Spirit to me and show me the truth. I'm going to prove that I'm right. Please help me prove that I'm right. And every time I was proven wrong. Every time I went to prove something, I ended up being wrong. He showed me because I asked him. So when I was speaking to this gentleman, he was saying that I was telling him because he still has, he still dipped into his past with soul sleep. He's, he still has that holding on to him from the Seventh Day Adventism. And I have, I still am going to get it to you, proof that soul sleep is a lie because my friend Annie has a book just with, it's all scripture. Everything I use is scripture to prove. I don't use what other people tell me. I only use what the Lord tells me, scripture to prove anything. Everything's there in scripture. He covered everything. God covered everything. Our God covered everything. Yahweh, our Lord, his name, I am, covered everything. Anyhow, so this gentleman was open to hear my side. So that's when you know that they, like the Danunes, and the knights, June knights, they want to shut the door on you. I'm shutting the door on you, okay? 
I don't want to hear what you have to say. June Knight doesn't want to hear what I have to say. She probably never even looked at my evidence. But this guy wants, he, he was open to hear what I have to say. So that tells me he has hope because we've all been misled, okay? So it was brought to my attention that he believes the following things and I watched it from his own mouth on his videos. He believes that, let me start from here, okay. I can't, basically with this gentleman, I can't move forward with you because of your beliefs. But I want to be here for you and with you to hopefully find redemption in you. Um, and we're praying for you. Me and friends are praying for you that you will see the truth, that your doctrine doctrinal beliefs are incorrect. It is actually from an antichrist spirit to deny the position of our Lord and Savior, Yahushua. It's a antichrist spirit. Let me get my notes in place, please. These are the three things he believes. He believes, I'm going to cover these. He believes that Christ is not a deity, that he wasn't born, that he was created, he wasn't always, he was a created being. He doesn't believe in the virgin birth and that he is Michael the Archangel. That comes out of Jehovah's Witness, just so that you know. So I'm going to cover all this right now. Scripture, let me see if I'm right. I have this all written down, people, so. Okay. Scripture is clear that Yahushua is the eternal, uncreated one. When Christians try to argue for the deity of Christ, Jehovah's Witnesses are quick to bring up Col Colossians 1.15. Paul writes, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. The modern English, tr English translations and the New World Translation agree on the translation of the text. However, the Christian and Jehovah's Witness differ with their interpre interpretation of the text. Jehovah's Witnesses understand the word firstborn to mean the first created. This fits their Aryan presupposition that Jesus is what they call it is a created being however firstborn does not have to be taken in a literal physical sense firstborn can mean first in pre preeminence or rank for instance God calls David the firstborn even though he was the youngest son of Jesse the psalmist writes and I will make him the firstborn the highest of the kings of the earth Psalm 89, 27. David was the last one born in his family, yet he was called the firstborn. The question remains, how should we interpret this text? There are a number of reasons why the Jehovah's Witnesses have the wrong interpretation. First, they must assume Yahushua was created to make their interpretation work. However, scripture is clear that Yahushua is the eternal uncreated one. In John's Gospel, he writes, all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. John 1.3. Think about that for one minute. John is not merely saying that Yahushua made all things. He is saying much more than that. Without Yahushua, nothing was made that was made. So there are only two categories, things made and things not made. If it was made, then Yahushua made it. Do you see what this means? Yahushua cannot be one of the made things because he made all the made things. This, this would mean that Yahushua made himself, which is log logically impossible. John goes on, out of his way to communicate that Yahushua is the uncreated creator who created all things that were created. 
Second, the context of Colossians demands that Yahushua is the uncreated God. Verse 15 cannot be read in isolation. Right after Paul says that Yahushua is preeminent over all creation, he says, for by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. Colossians 16 through 19. This is not the description of a finite, finite created being. In fact, in the very next chapter, Paul writes, For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. Colossians 2 9. Given the overall context, Jehovah's Witnesses are forced to do hermetical gymnastics. I probably didn't say that word right. To make Colossians 1.15 say what they need it to say. However, an honest evaluation of the text demonstrates that Yahushua is the created God. Isaiah 9.6, For to us a child is born. To us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Does that sound like somebody that isn't God? I mean, it says it in Isaiah. Isaiah, again, prophesies. For us, Isaiah 9, 6, for us, to a child is born, to us, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. He is one with God, Prince of Peace. It says it right there. He is Everlasting Father. Those are all his positions. It tells us what his position is. Colossians 1, 15 through 17. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. John 10, 30. I, this is our Lord and Savior talking, I and the Father are one. John 8:58. Yahushua said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Our Lord and Savior is saying, He is, I am. God, Yahweh's name. Yahweh equals I am. What is I am? I am means Yahweh. He is the Father, and the Father is in Him. Anyone who denies that is an antichrist spirit. John 20, 28, Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. The apostles say, My Lord and my God. He is God. Isaiah 9, 6. Did I say this one? I already said that one, sorry. Waiting for the blessed the appearing of the Lord are great. Okay, Titus 2.13. Waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Yahushua. Colossians 2.9. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. You can't deny that, sir. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily bodily. Hebrews 1.8 
but the but the son but of the son he says your throne O god is forever and ever the scepter of uprightness and this is the scepter of your kingdom they're calling the son of god god See where I'm at here. Okay, hold on. Matthew 123, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. He is God in the flesh. You cannot deny his deity. John 10. 30 through 33, I am, I and the Father are one. The Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Yahushua answered them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you going to stone me? The Jews answered him, It is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. Because he is God. Isaiah 44, 6, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Oh my gosh, you people, why do you take the scripture? You pick and choose what scripture you want to use for your ridiculous cults. Come out of the cults. Come out of the Antichrist spirit, please. I'm begging you. Come out of the Antichrist spirit. I get angry, yeah. Oh my gosh, she's got the spirit of anger. God gets angry. God gets angry. So I have the right to get angry over your disgusting false doctrines. He gives me that authority to get angry over your disgusting, venomous doctrines. Stop with your antichrist spirit. Thus says the Lord. Second Peter one one. I need more water. Second Peter 1.1, 1, 1, Simeon Peter, a servant and apostle of Yahushua, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Yahushua. He is God and Savior. He is God and Savior. He is God and Savior. You cannot deny it. John 10.33. Did I say this one already? Oh, no. The Jews answered him, it is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. John 14, 9, 11, Yahushua said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Can I say that again? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on an account, on account of the work, works themselves. Romans 9.5, to them belong the patriarchs, and for, from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever, amen. Christ, who is God over all. Genesis 126. I'm talking too much and I'm losing my, the juice is in my mouth. Genesis 126, then God said, let us, look it up in scripture. God doesn't say, let me make man in my image. God says in Genesis 1 26, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, I just don't know how people just pick and choose what scripture they want to use for their cult. I just don't get it. I don't get it. You have to take the scriptures in a whole. God said he was going to preserve his word. Okay. He promised us he was going to preserve his word. Do not trust God. Colossians 1, 16 through 17. I think I already said that one. I'm not going to say that one again. And he is before all things and then all things all together. I already said that one. Okay, I already said that one. 
have you, this mind among yourselves, which in Christ, though he was in the form of God, did not equal. Okay, I don't think I've said this one. Excuse me. Philippians, Philippians 2, 5, 8. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Yahushua, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing. He is God, and he made himself nothing for us. He took himself and brought himself down to our pathetic level just so we could reign with him. What a I mean, I'm going to cry because what a gracious God that is, right? What a gracious God. Oh my gosh, what a gracious God. For him to do that for us, to come down and be pathetic like us. Just so we can be saved and have everlasting life with him. I'm going to cry. That's what's going to make me cry. Okay. Get it together, Cassie. Have this mind. Okay. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Yahushua, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with, a, with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, pathetic like us, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. How can that not make you cry? <laughs> I mean, he did that for us, and it takes a lot for me to cry, and only he can make me cry. How wonderful is that to have done that for us? I gotta get together. Thank you, Lord, for doing that for us, and I'm a bad sinner, I know it. Isaiah 7, 14, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, okay, this is where I get into, um, Sorry, crying is a very personal thing to me, and I can't believe I'm displaying it on here, but whatever. I'm doing it for him, so. Um, this is where he denies this gentleman. He denies the virgin birth. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Okay. Matthew 1 18 25 now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way when his mother Mary had betrothed Joseph before they came together she was found to be with a child from the Holy Spirit now this gentleman is claiming on a video he said I heard from his own mouth say that Joseph and Mary had sexual relations and Jesus was born that is an antichrist speech. Please, I'm begging you to redeem yourself. I'm begging you. Now the birth of Yahushua took place in this way, when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit, and her husband Joseph, being a man, just a man, and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Yahushua, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, people, do you know what Yahushua means? It means salvation. He will save us from our sins. Jesus has no meaning. The name Jesus means nothing. It doesn't mean salvation. Come on. For he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Now I'm going to address the final thing. And thank goodness because I'm at an hour and a half and I went way too long. But he also said in a video that Jesus was Michael the archangel. This is a Jehovah Witness doctrine. This is an antichrist doctrine. To lower our God to the status of an angel. Angels are servants. So, are you saying Yahushua, he came to serve us, did he not? He lowered himself as a man. 
as God, he lowered himself as a man, okay? That's what he did because he loved us that much. And you're taking his right and his title away? You can't do that, dear. Stop. God created the angels, and the Bible tells us that they are his servants, sent by him into the world to carry out his work and work for our good. The Bible says in Hebrews 1.14, Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? You take Christ and you lower him down to this level when you do that. You're taking our God and you're lowering him below his rightful place on the throne. This is a long enough video. I think I've covered everything. And to this gentleman, I really truly hope and pray that you'll see the errors of your ways and that you're spreading a false antichrist spirit doctrine. To Marie, stop checking up on every single person, okay? And those who are trying to be your friend, don't put your, don't, be, don't victimize yourself and put the blame on them, okay? And quit searching people out. Not unless you need to expose them. I don't need to be exposed. I'm an open book. I hope I explained myself. Um, to the Danoons and to June Knight, you still are redeemable. Maybe this is a lesson to redeem yourselves. I won't put out the information I have on you. If you can honestly make a video, quit slamming me, a sister in Christ, and calling me a witch. That's, you know what, you're breaking the commandment there, Yana, by calling me a witch. I don't practice witchcraft. So you're, you're breaking a commandment, thou shalt not bear false witness on your neighbor. That's what you're doing, you're breaking a commandment. Do you have evidence that I practice witchcraft? No. You guys are still redeemable. So please, I know that you serve your God money and you don't really truly serve our God. But everybody is redeemable. So I won't put those videos of evidence that I have out on you. And if anything ever happens to me, just so you know, it's the Danoons, okay? If anything happens to me, because all my friends are worried, oh, these people have got connections, they're gonna come after you, they're gonna kill you. Well, if I die, you can bet your bottom dollar it was them. You guys are redeemable. I won't put out the videos of evidence if you redeem yourselves and find your, just so that you know, God told us you're not supposed to be making money off of his word. So you all that are making money off of our Lord's word, you're going to get in trouble by him. I'm just here to expose you and your fruits. Have a good day. God bless. Bye-bye.